Hello and welcome back. My name is Jason, or you may know me as Easy Cat. Where did September go? Seriously, where did it go? I, wh what? I never wanted to be one of those people that came back onto their YouTube channel and was like, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry I haven't posted for so long. But yet here we are. And I'm so sorry I haven't posted for so long. But in my defense, I'm so tired. That being said, I couldn't let the end of the month go away without showing you guys what I read in September. I do wanna make a little disclaimer. If you follow me on Goodreads, you will probably know that I read a lot of manga and comics this month. Those will not be included in this video. This is just going to be the novels that I read. Should I do a separate video for manga? Do you guys care about that? Uh, let me know in the comments. Let's get started. I started off September really strong with probably one of my favorite books of the month, which was Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. You guys are probably seeing this book a lot on social media and there is a reason. It's about a Latinx, transgender young man um, and it has to do a lot with like Dia de los Muertos and um, Latin mythology and just really cool storytelling, really great young adult fantasy, amazing for representation. I think, you know, for the past um, few months, especially on TikTok and here, I'm sure on Instagram and YouTube, we've been talking a lot about diversifying your bookshelves and finding books with more representation. And Cemetery, Cemetery, blah, 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 blah. Cemetery Voice just hits at the perfect time. Um, it's great for spooky season. It's great for representation. It comes at a time where, you know, especially trans rights are just really being talked about. So to have trans people represented in such a fantastic, exciting, fresh way for young people right now is just, mwah, perfect timing, really amazing book. I gave it a five out of five and I still think you should read it. Every time I see someone pop up on my TikTok or my Instagram that's getting it for the first time, reading it for the first time, I just, my heart is full. It's such a good book. You need to check it out. So after that, I read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Now I picked this up because it was the Barnes and Noble book of the month. And it was described as Knives Out, but Young Adult. I love Knives Out, I love Young Adult books. What could go wrong? In one aspect, this is a story about a young woman who basically comes into this inheritance um, from someone that she's never met in her life. It's just like randomly she gets a call, like, by the way, you just inherited like a crap ton of money and property and stuff. And the other hand is this kind of mystery that's going on with the family um, of the person who died and them kind of trying to figure out like he's playing some sort of game with them. At the end of the day, the part about her inheriting all this money and um, you know stepping into this focus when she really had nothing before, I loved that part of the story. The actual like mystery inheritance games portion of the story was okay. The other thing, and I kind of just like inherently knew that this was gonna happen when I walked into this book, was that there are four male characters that are like the four brothers of this family that are kind of like playing the game. And I don't know, some of them really start to blend together. There's not enough different about the four of them to really make it necessary to have the four of them. There's really only four of them for the sake of the mystery and not because they're like super compelling characters. That being said, I actually really liked the main character and this is very clearly a series. It's following this trend of young adult books that I'm not sure I'm in love with, which is that the first book has like a cliffhanger and like things just get started and then the first book ends. So there's definitely gonna be another book, but I will say I would like to read the next book. I'm curious to see what happens next. Call me old fashioned, but I would like to see trilogies be more like the original Star Wars trilogy. And by that, I mean, I want the first book to tell me a complete story. I want everything I could ever want in a beginning to end story in the first book. And then once we buy that book and we decide that's real good, then give me a second book with a crazy cliffhanger and a third book that ties it all up. But this trend of having first books that end in like a cliffhanger and not even, it's not even like a cliffhanger, it's like the story doesn't even get started until the last chapter. I don't think I like it and I'm seeing it a lot. Next up, I read Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass, book two of the Throne of Glass series. When I read Throne of Glass, I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was amazing. Definitely was my least favorite Sarah J. Mass book I had read, which makes a lot of sense because it was the first book that she ever got published, I think so. And she was like really young when she wrote it. Crown of Midnight, fortunately, is a much better step in the right direction. I really enjoyed this book. I thought the twists were really great. I thought the storytelling was really great. I thought there was a lot more building on the characters. After I read Throne of Glass, this was not a series. I was like, oh, I'm gonna keep reading it because everybody talks about it, but am I gonna, am I really excited to keep reading it? And I don't know about that. But now I'm legitimately excited to keep reading this series. So that was Crown of Midnight. This next one was kind of random. This was, uh, this author was recommended to me from a TikTok live that I did. And um, this was like considered the first book, like where you should start. So I picked up Alana, the first song, which is by Tamora Pierce. This is in the Song of the Lioness. I, there's like three titles on this. I, what is even, what is this called? I think it's called Alana, the first adventure. Well, I don't know what I said. So obviously this is more of a like young reader fantasy story. 
Um, but I really enjoyed it. It's got, it's got like kind of that Mulan aspect of like a girl who dresses up to be a boy to become a knight. But like the character was really fun. It was a really easy, fast read. Um, I definitely want to read more in this series. I don't know. It just was like really like casual, fun, um, female empowerment, great characters, like the story. Not a lot to say, not a ton happens in this book, but I had a really good time the entire way through it. So I'll definitely be checking out more of Tamora, Pier Tam T P P Tamora Pierce's work. Ugh, I can't talk anymore. Okay, this next one I have quite a bit to say, but I'll try to condense it down. So the next one I read was uh, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. <laughs> so worried I was gonna say her last name wrong. I like freaked myself out. From Blood and Ash is a book that a lot of people have been talking about, especially since the sequel just came out. Uh, it's a book that was extremely hyped for me. Uh, I mean, everybody is talking about how great this book is. I thought it was just okay. Me? Really, this is like a medieval fantasy uh, werewolves and vampires story um, that's kind of wrapped up in a lot of fancy glossiness to make it seem like it's not. I think the real draw to this book is for people that really like things like A Court of Thorns and Roses, this book is very similar to those, but with uh, more steamy scenes. It's got, it's it's more R-rated, more adult than those books. Now you'll notice I said it's very similar to books like A Court of Thorns and Roses, and that is actually my main complaint. It's too similar. There's so much about this book that is so derivative to other books that even the main characters I feel like are just copy and pastes of other characters I've read several times before while reading young adult fantasy. To me, this is a young adult fantasy book but written for adults. For me, this was a tough book to get through. Um, I found it to be very, very slow. It wasn't until like the last 150, 200 pages that anything really um, important really happened. I don't know, I know a lot of people love this, so I'm not gonna say you should 100% take my recommendation on whether it's a great book or not, because let's be honest, on Goodreads, this is very highly rated. I've talked to a lot of people who absolutely love this book. I am definitely in the minority, but for me, it just wasn't that great. Next up, I read, how It All Blew Up by Arvin Ahmadi. This is a story about a gay, young Iranian man who um, basically gets blackmailed into coming out. So instead of dealing with any of that, he runs away from home, gets on a few planes and ends up in Rome where he spends his summer. To me, this book is like Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda meets Under the Tuscan Sun, a really bizarre combination, but I think it works quite well. Yes, there's a lot of undertones of the racism towards Muslim people in this book, um, but it is great to see that representation. Yes, there's a lot of dealing with coming out, but ultimately uh, amidst all that drama is this really beautiful story about kind of finding yourself over the summer in Rome. It's lovely. In fact, that was the word I kept saying when I finished this book. You know, I finished it and I turned and I said, you know, this book was delightful. It was lovely. It was like a little vacation. And that's not to say there isn't drama and turmoil in the book because there absolutely is, but there's something just really romantic about running away and finding yourself in a foreign country. And I really liked it. In fact, I liked it a lot more than I thought it was going to. So if any of the things I just said about the representation in this book or what it's about appeal to you in a little bit, I would check it out. It was a really fast read and it was just a really lovely read. As I said before, Cemetery Boys was excellent, but the reason I didn't say that it was my favorite book I read this month is because I also read Anxious People by Frederick Bachman and this book was superb. In fact, I'm planning on doing a video towards the end of the year about my favorite, my top 10 favorite books of the year, and Anxious People will absolutely be on that list. This is a story mainly about a hostage situation, but more than that, it's a story about how people are connected and how random strangers are connected and how the connection between all of us is the love that we have for the people around us and the kindness that we show each other. In our day and age right now, there's just so much anger and people are so mad about everything and oftentimes for good reason, but it was so nice to read a book that was about positivity and kindness and love and caring for strangers and finding it in yourself to forgive people. And oh my God, this book was so good. Um, I cried many times while reading this because they're just moments that are just so absolutely human and beautiful. Uh, I, just please read it. It's so good. Easily my favorite book of the month. I've talked a lot about Frederick Bachman on my page because Beartown, one of his other books, is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. But this book was just astonishing. Um, it's just such a breath of fresh air. I, I can't recommend it enough. All right, I haven't even talked about this on my Book Talk channel yet or on Instagram, so you guys are gonna be the first ones to hear that I, this month, read Ember in the Ashes. This one was by Sabah Tahir. God, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. This is the first of a series set in a fantasy world. Um, it goes between back and forth between two characters. So this is a very dark fantasy world. Um, one of the characters is a young man who's training to be basically like 
a soldier but in the school where they train the soldiers it's just really terrible to them like they step out of line a little bit and they just get killed it's like dead oh you looked at someone wrong? dead you're dead and the other girl is um trying to save her family so she kind of joins up with the resistance and they place her to be like a mole in this school but she's acting as a servant uh, well actually a slave to um one of the high up officers who's super abusive to her what I really loved about this book is that compared to a lot of other young adult fantasy, this book is dark, like really dark. And I really liked how dark it was. Like they, they did not pull any punches. There were often times where like whole swaths of characters were killed off. Really dark, really gritty. And I really liked it for that. I also just really enjoyed the two main characters. I thought they were super interesting. They held my interest the whole way through. The only thing I didn't love is it does exactly what I just complained about in the Inheritance games. Things pick up, things are getting going. We're moving towards good things. And then there's a cliffhanger and then the book ends. The first book of the series ends. Why? Why must we do this? It's just so kind of upsetting because I feel like we could have had like a good like through line kind of finished out the story, which I guess a little bit it does but ah, that's my only really big complaint but other than that I really liked this book and I am definitely going to keep reading the series a um, lot of fun especially if you want something that's just really like Game of Thrones level dark gritty but young adult check it out Next up, we have A Lotsoe, which is by Darcy Little Badger. Now, this book is advertised as young adult, but I absolutely think younger readers could read it, you know, even in that, like, 10 to 13 age range. There's really no, like, sex or lots of violence or anything like that. Um, it reminded me most of things like Percy Jackson, to be totally honest. A Lotsoe is a story about a Lipan Apache young woman, um, and it deals a lot with just, like, her heritage and her family, but it's set in an alternate United States where, um, you know, there's like ghosts and magic and fungi portals and um, really introduces this kind of like magicalness into the US, like an alternate reality. I really liked that this story took a lot of time to tell stories, it really put a lot of emphasis on that kind of Native American ancestry, heritage, storytelling. I really enjoyed all of that. I think for me, the book maybe felt a little bit on the young side, um, just as far as the content and the writing. Not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I, like I said, I think people who are younger audiences will probably enjoy this a little bit more. Alatsue is a fantastic character. Um, she's also asexual, so they get some really great representation in there, as well as, well as the Lipan Apache piece. There's just like a lot of good representation, and it was a very unique story, which I think in part is because it's being told um, from a perspective and a voice and a you know, diverse author that I've I've never read before. This is um, Darcy Little Badger's debut novel, um, and it just feels like a really fresh, again, a, kind of a breath of fresh air. So I really enjoyed it a lot, so I, I think you should check it out. Okay, I said I wasn't going to mention any comic books. This book kind of borders between comic and prose, which is Solutions and Other Problems by Allie Broche. Um, Allie Broche is a blogger, so she tells stories through art as well as writing, and they're all just kind of like short stories or essays. Um, she goes all over the place. They're mostly very funny. I mean, she talks about her dog that she had at one point who had like a, um, I think it's a liver problem, I forget, but it like got so bloated that it looked like a balloon. And she talks about like her pets and she talks about her relationship with her sister, but she also talks about going through really difficult times, you know, going through some big health problems, going through her divorce. So she kind of jumps back and forth between these absolutely hysterical situations and then very real life situations. Her first book, um, Hyperbole and a Half, is one of my all-time favorite books. I've never had anyone explain in a book depression in such a relatable way as she did. Like, I think she still is, you know, the way she describes in this book, that book is probably the most heard or seen I've ever felt as someone who's dealt with that in their life. Um, this book is still really excellent, but it just never quite reaches the heights of the first. That being said, if you like Hyperbole and a Half, you should absolutely read this. But if you're interested in checking these books out, I would start with Hyperlean and Half because it is the better of the two books. Okay, that is everything that I read in September. However, I do wanna make one special note. I am almost halfway through Legendborn. It's just really good. It has really good representation. It has really good story, really good writing. It's really interesting. I've been engaged since page one. Like, I just am really liking it. So I just really wanted a chance to tell you you should read Legendborn because it's, it's fantastic. Guys, thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you read some good books in September. I'm so excited to get started with my October reads. As always, if you want to see more of my book videos when I deign to make them and post them, please like and subscribe because that makes me feel pretty. What? But I hope you have a wonderful month, a wonderful week, and I hope you're reading something amazing, and I will see you next time.